Hi everyone, John here from Look Smart Home Inspections right here in New Jersey. And today I thought it might be interesting just to answer some of your questions that I receive on social media platforms. And we'll go through just a couple of these questions. Maybe you'll find it helpful. And you know, if you have any other further questions, you can reach out to me. But the first question is, what should I do? What type of inspection should I do when I'm considering purchasing a home? And that's a good question. Um, in my mind, obviously, you want to do the home inspection, vitally important. You want to do a radon test, also super important. And now a lot of people are going to kind of push back on that radon test, thinking that radon is not an issue. You know, radon is like some kind of voodoo thing that's made up and it's not real. But I got to tell you, it's real. And roughly 1 in 12, 1 in 13 homes are going to have high levels of radon gas once we test them. So that's a, it's not a, a tremendous number, but it's not zero either. And you don't want to be the person um, who I've found before, right? I've done home inspections before who the seller, and they found out that they've been living in the house for over like 10 years and had radon levels in the 30s, which is, you know, basically super high. So radon is a carcinogenic gas, and it can cause lung cancer. And it builds up in homes, um, and you want to have radon levels that are under four picocuries per liter of air. Now, there's no safe levels of radon, but the established action level uh, by the EPA and DEP are four picocuries per liter of air, which is small. But you don't want to have radon levels above that for sure. And anything below that action level, you don't really have to install a mitigation system, although it is advisable to try to bring those radon levels uh, roughly about two picocuries per liter of air. So that's the second thing that I would do is a radon test because you don't want to be living in a home with carcinogenic gas, right? The next thing I would do would be do a, do a WDI inspection. So here in New Jersey, many home inspectors are licensed uh, pesticide applicators. And in New Jersey, we have something called a 7B license, which means that we have a rider basically on that original pesticide license to perform uh, termite inspections, WDI inspections, or wood destroying insects or organism inspections. And why is that important? Because you want to know if there's termite damage to the house or termite activity or carpenter ant damage or carpenter bee activity or wood boring beetles in the home that you're thinking about buying, especially if it's an older home. So those are the three sort of non-negotiable things that I would do, right? Home inspection, comprehensive, have a great home inspector do that. Radon testing for sure, do it. It doesn't matter if it's a slab house. I don't care. You should still do it, right? Any house that's on the uh, that's a slab house or has a basement or crawl space, you should have a radon test and wood destroying insect uh, inspection for sure. Now the next layer of due diligence is also very important, and that's a sewer line inspection. I would, without a doubt, if your house is ten years or older. I would have a sewer line inspection, even on newer homes. Even I did a, a few houses that are like one year old and the sewer line has had bellies and problems and areas of water retention. So this is something that a lot of people miss, right? They don't want to do the sewer line inspection because it's, it's, it adds a few hundred dollars to the home inspection. But you know what? Spending a couple or a few hundred dollars now is better than spending eight to ten thousand dollars to fix or replace a sewer line later. So, a sewer line is the main lateral from the home to the street. And as home inspectors, we do a uh, visual inspection. So I can't see that lateral. I don't know what that pipe looks like from the home to the street. The only way to know if there's problems is to put a push camera through that pipe. And we'll do our best to do that. Um, and you should really think about doing that layer of due diligence um, with a sewer line inspection because it's the only really way to know if there's water retention in the line, if the line is broken, if there's tree roots present, if the line is compromised, cracked, or broken. 
that's really the only way to know. So don't skip that sore line inspection. It's super important in my mind. The next layer of due diligence is to find out if there's any below ground oil tanks in the home. And this is super important too, right? Because we don't want to move into a house and then we're stuck with a below ground oil tank underground and then we have a big environmental catastrophe on our hands, right? We move into the house, we get ownership, and then we also own the surrounding property and any oil tanks that are under it. So what we want to do is have an oil tank location service come in to determine if there are any below ground oil tanks on the property. And typically this is done by using a magnetometer, which is, uh, you know, sort of a device, a picture, uh, you know, a big metal detector in some cases. And they're going to sweep the property back and forth for any anomalous metal objects that fit the length and width description of an oil tank below ground. And that's super important to do. You don't want to not do an oil tank location for the price of that, which is generally like 250 you know, plus or minus dollars. You can have peace of mind for sure. Now, some of these companies will also have ground penetrating radar, which I also recommend that you hire a company that has ground penetrating radar. Because if they find an anomalous object, then you're going to have to do an additional due diligence, either a dig or excavation to determine if there's an oil tank. But having a company that does ground penetrating radar, sometimes you don't have to do it. Sometimes the ground penetrating radar, which is an expensive piece of equipment, but some companies have it and some don't. Uh, I think they all should have it, frankly. Um, it'll tell you and it, and it give you some more information regarding what that object is below ground. And that could save you from having to dig or excavate. So that's super important as well. The next thing I would do would be probably to have a level two chimney inspection. And look, let's face it. I've been doing this a long time and rarely, rarely do chimneys pass an inspection. Most times when we have a chimney inspector come in, the chimney is going to need a liner. There's going to be some issues with the chimney, either the top or the bottom, and there's going to be problems. But me as a home inspector, I can only visually look at the components that I can see. I'm not spending an hour just with a focused inspection on your chimney. But if you want to have a, an extra layer of due diligence, you can have a level two chimney inspection of the chimney, and that'll bring to light some problems. Now, a lot of chimneys here in New Jersey, at least, are sold as is. So you're not really going to be asked, you're not able to ask the seller to fix those issues. But you might be able to, and at least with a level two chimney inspection, they're going to put a drop camera in, and you're going to learn the condition of the interior of the chimney liner. Is it compromised? Are the mortar joints bad? Is it cracked, damaged, broken? And do I need a new chimney liner? If you're buying an older home, chances are you're going to need a liner in most cases. But it's always good to know. So those are the things um, that I would really like to layer in uh, as far as due diligence if I was purchasing a home. Then there's other things you can do like air quality testing, allergen testing, and, you know, mold testing as well. If the inspector does find, you know, mold in the home, you may want to go back and have some testing performed. Some of us here in New Jersey actually do perform um, the air quality testing and the mold testing, the surface uh, testing as far as tape, tape lifts and direct uh, testing of the mold as well. So that will give you an other a layer of due diligence. So those are the probably the things that I would focus on the most. Um, and I think that if you do those things, or, or at least a combination of those things, you will find yourself in a much better position to make good decisions about the home. Now here in New Jersey, there's a lot of homes that are sold as is, and you're not going to really be able to sometimes ask for correction. But you know what? It's good to know what you're getting into. It's good to know the issues that the house has before you, you know, purchase it. Or if you're, you have your mind set on purchasing that house, you need to know what's going on. So at least now you can set yourself up a game plan 
to fix those issues. And maybe the home inspector can sort of guide you in relation to what is uh, necessary immediately and what, you know, can wait two or three years, you know, on that list of correction. So I hope that helps and thank you. Wow, that was a longer answer to that question than I ever expected it to be. But uh, who knows? Well, oh, well, uh, you don't really plan for those things. They just sort of, you know, come out. Anyway, what I have for you guys now is a few defects that I, ha I found recently doing home inspections here in New Jersey. And I like to include these because I, I find this very interesting and hopefully you guys too. And I'll actually kind of show you some of the things that we look for in home inspections. I mean, there's a, a multitude, multitude, there's thousands and thousands of things and defects and problems that we look for in homes. So this is not everything, of course, but I think it's helpful for you guys to actually see some of the things that we do find in the field. And maybe you can relate that and look for these things in your own home, or you can sort of keep your antenna up and look for these things when you're out, you know, looking for your dream house. So let's take a look and see what we have. And here's a few of the defects that we recently found in houses. I'm looking at a lead main water line, and I know it's lead because we have this lead solder ball right here, right here. Plus this material, if you scratch it, easily, easily scratches, and we don't see any copper in here. So this is a lead line. And lead is really the only material that can do these crazy elbows, these bends like this. So if you see a main water line in a home that you're buying, it looks like this, and it has sort of this big looping bend like that, and it's very malleable, it's soft. And then we have this typical lead solder ball right here. That's a lead main water line, and that's a health hazard. So uh, that is likely will recommend this uh, to the client be changed out to a copper main because um, this is something that can be a significant health hazard. You don't want to be drinking or expose your children to, um, you know, water uh, that is in high in lead content. So this is something that's pretty significant and a pretty big fix to uh, replace a, a, lay, a lead main uh, from here, the uh, inside connection all the way out to the, uh, the city connection. So definitely something to look out for, especially if you're buying an older home. When you guys are thinking about buying a flip house, a house that's been renovated for sale, usually the uh, flipping construction company is going to parge coat or cement coat the interior foundation walls and apply a dry lock sealer to the walls, right? This is only a temporary fix for water seepage. If we look close here, we see already that we're bleeding through, right? So this is evidence of water seepage coming through our walls right now with some efflorescence. So if you guys are buying a flip house and there is no basement water control system and you see that the walls have been recently cement coated and painted with a dry lock sealer, it is highly likely that they're trying to cover up or conceal water seepage through the foundation walls. I'm not a big fan of dry lock because it actually can lock the water into the block walls, causing more damage. I would actually rather see that water be able to come through and have a proper uh, water control system here. Of course, we want to directionally control our water outside, our gutters, downspouts, and everything uh, like that, of course. But I want you guys to be looking for newly coated walls. Seeing a wet dry vacuum in the middle of a basement floor that's been recently used that has water in it as a home inspector gives me the heebie jeebies. So I'm definitely going to look closer now for any type of water penetration. And we definitely see some water seepage through these foundation walls in this basement. But I wonder why the seller would just leave this in the middle of the basement floor. I wouldn't recommend that if you're selling a home, but it helps me as a home inspector because it helps me put my antenna up regarding any basement water issues. Wet dry vacuum, no bueno. 
A thermal expansion tank for a water heater should be properly strapped. So we want to see strapping under this, under this thermal expansion tank that ties into the floor joist above to support that expansion tank. We can see that the expansion tank is heavy and it's actually settling, it's moving down, it's putting excess stress on these fittings right here and we could have a major leak if that gives way. So this is a no-go, we need to have proper strapping, especially if this expansion tank becomes waterlogged, then we're gonna be really in a pickle. So we need to really make sure that these expansion tanks above the water heaters are properly strapped and supported or else we can have a flood sometime in the future. When you guys are buying a house and you see that all of the joists, ceiling, subfloor, everything is painted white, that's typically caused by a mold problem. And this is most likely a mold remediation. This is probably a mold inhibitor and sealer that they put on this uh, unfinished basement here. I'm trying to talk s softly. Um, all of this white here generally means a mold remediation, so be on the lookout for this if you are thinking about buying a home and you have an unfinished basement and somebody took the time to do all this white paint. That is out of place and generally means a mold remediation has been performed here. Just running this air conditioner and we can see here that our secondary condensation line is discharging right here. So that means our first condensation line here is obstructed. Um, usually we find a float switch in here that would tr trip off and it would stop the air conditioner from running. But something's going on here where condensation is dripping down the unit. You can see it here. So we have a condensation line, a main line, that is obstructed and you guys should look for this. So a lot of times we'll see this water staining or rusting on the top of the unit that would indicate our main condensation line is not working, so our secondary line is coming in. However, there is no really piping for the secondary line. It's just discharging on top of our unit right here. No bueno. It's low sloped roof, and this is an asphalt material here called rolled roofing. I don't really like this type of material because it's generally inferior. It has a short life expectancy as compared, say, to a modified bitumen or, say, like a rubberized membrane roof. And here you see that they installed it back to front. So these strips of this roofing material are going up and down here from the back of the roof to the front of the roof. They should be going left to right with overlap of the seams. So as our water sheds over those seams, you know, there is an overlap there. Here, we see that they try to seal these seams with roofing tar, which is not gonna work over long term. And you see some of this roofing tar is starting to get brittle in the crack. And this is a very poor installation that we have here. And if we look over here, we have a patch right here. We don't want to see patching to a, a low sloped roof. We see that the material under there is soft and we see that our material has actually been nailed. So we have nails going through the low sloped roof, which is a no, no also creates pathways for water. Um, we see this nail is actually raised. It's sitting proud here, this one too. So this rolled, this roofing right here, I'm gonna recommend replacement um, just because of its condition and age. And um, that's why we have to look. That's why we do home inspections. This is something that you're probably not gonna see yourself because there's no access to this roof other than jumping up here with a ladder. Water heater vent pipe, this is a draft hood. We see how loose that is. And then we have this big gap right here where carbon monoxide can leach right into the finished basement. So, oh, didn't mean to do that. But you can see how this is not um, secured properly. I'm obviously gonna fix this, but this is no bueno for sure because we're gonna get carbon monoxide gas into our living space and sometimes uh, that can be very dangerous if it builds up high levels and you're sleeping and you don't know and there's no odor and uh, obviously bad stuff can happen. So this has to be corrected for sure. So I'm just testing this boiler and I'm wondering why the heat's not working. And then we see this pressure relief discharge pipe right here from this pressure relief valve is discharging all this water, which I'm going to have to try to clean up. Um, but this, this is a safety device that helps 
discharge excess pressure that builds up in the boiler. So this is actually a good thing that it's doing this because it saves you from big problems if excess pressure builds up inside this boiler. This, this valve is made to discharge that pressure, um, and it is doing that, um, which is here. But obviously, we have a problem with the boiler, and so we're going to have to get a heating technician in there to figure out what's going on. But um, this is uh, no bueno. Under the fireplace, we have some wood framing under this fireplace right here. And we're not supposed to have anything wood directly under a fireplace. Why? Because embers can come into uh, this area by um, not everything is sealed up correctly. And then they can ignite the wood that's under the fireplace. So this is a safety hazard. And if you're buying a home and you see wood directly under your fireplace in the basement like we see here, that is a no-go. We can't have this. Even though this house is probably from the 50s, we still, this doesn't meet requirements for safety. So we're gonna let our client know and also this fireplace shouldn't be used until a chimney sweep deems it safe. So most likely all this wood right here is gonna have to come out under the fireplace. Cement fiber siding installation and the manufacturer says that we have to have a caulk joint right here where the exterior siding meets this side wall. So we should have caulk joints all along here. And that prevents water entry because this particular type of siding doesn't like exposure to water, especially at the ends. Even if they painted the ends, we still need a caulk joint all through here. And we're missing all of the caulk joints throughout the exterior of the house. So this is a defect and it should be corrected. As home inspectors, we look for big problems and we also look for small problems. So when we're looking at a sink, we're looking at the sink basin to make sure there's no cracking. And here we see some of this porcelain is starting to crack into chip. And that's something that actually is reportable in the home inspection report. So we'll do that. We're also going to make a note that the stopper is missing as well. So stopper missing and cracking to the sink basin right here because even these small things our customer wants to know what's going on. They're spending a fortune on a home. We might as well tell them. Here we have some mid-wall foundation cracking right here. This is a sheer crack right in the joint of the wall, in the mortar joint. And these cracks generally happen because of wall pressure or hydraulic pressure on the outside exerting too much pressure on these walls. You can see it here. Sometimes they form these stair step cracks here. So we have a hydraulic sealer, which is a dry lock on these walls. What the hydraulic sealer does is it seals in all the pores. It doesn't allow that water to penetrate through, which would be more advantageous. And this can actually worsen a problem like this in this wall right here. So see all this dry lock sealer that we have here, that can actually cause more issues than it solves.